Now that we know something about how the variation method works, let's apply it to particle in a box. In fact, let's use the variation method uh, to try to calculate wave functions and energies for particle in a box. Let's say that this is our trial wave function here. Uh, phi of x, trial wave function is x times a minus x. Now is this a good trial wave function for the n equal 1 state? Uh, where uh, a in this this um, function is the length of the box. Well, we know a couple criteria that a good uh, wave function sh could, uh, should follow. First of all, it should be continuous. All right, so we look at the function, our trial wave function, phi of x. That's equal to x times a minus x. And we plot this, yeah, it's continuous, there's no gaps, it's just a continuous curve. So yes, it is continuous. So, so far, so good. Another um, criterion for a good wave function is it should be single valued. All right, what that means is that for every value of x, there should be only one value of y. And that's true, this is uh, single valued. You can't have more than one x for a value. Uh, when x goes from 0 to a. So yes, it is single valued. 3, it should be square integrable. In other words, can you integrate the square of this wave function? The answer is yes. If you square the wave function, you'll get uh, a fourth order polynomial. And we certainly can integrate that. So yes, it is. How about boundary conditions? Well, here's our particle in a box. Okay, this goes up to infinity, this goes up to infinity. We're plotting potential here as a function of x, and here it is 0, it's flat all the way across from 0 to a. So there's the length of the box. Now we want the wave function, uh, this trial wave function at 0. We want that the value of the wave function to be equal to 0. And the other boundary condition on the other side of the box is we want the uh, trial wave function when x equal a to also be 0. Let's see if that's met. Yes, when x is 0, this function is 0. And then when x is a, now you have a minus a, that's 0, so the function is 0. So it also meets the boundary conditions. So you would say, yes, uh, it's a pretty good wave function, or, or trial wave function for a particle in a box. Now let's describe how you can use the variation method to obtain a better wave function. All right, so this is the trial wave function and you'll get a certain energy. Uh, let's uh, do a variation on that trial wave function. Let's, for example, what I d figured out, maybe you can figure out some other way to do it, but what I said, oh, let's add another parameter. Let's make this x, a minus x. Let's raise this just for fun to the b power and now b will be an adjustable parameter. And the idea is that uh, with this trial wave function, you'll calculate an energy, and then you vary the value of the parameter b until you get a minimum energy. And that value of b gives you the best wave function and the best energy you can for this particular trial wave function. OK, so just again to be more explicit, what we're going to do is to calculate a trial energy, or expectation value of trial energy, by evaluating these integrals. We have our trial wave function, Hamiltonian, trial wave function, and then to normalize it, we're going to divide by the uh, trial wave function squared, that integral over all space. All right, so and then this contains b, so you vary, you get an expression for this, you vary b till e is minimized, and that b gives you the best wave function and energy you can possibly have for that particular kind of, um, of uh, trial wave function. All right, so let's actually go ahead. Uh, so the rest of this lecture is all uh, calculations, algebraic, and also Excel numerical calculations. Um, so it's not really uh, tangential to this. We've actually answered uh, all these questions in this slide. But if you're interested in how uh, you go about doing this, follow along. All right, let's evaluate these two integrals. Uh, let's evaluate uh, phi h phi. And remember we said phi, our trial wave function, is a function of x, is just x times a minus x. 
and our Hamiltonian for particle in a box is minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x just kinetic energy and particle in a box the potential is zero all right so if we do this integral here this will be the integral over all space for particle in a box all space is zero to a and uh, here we have x the function x uh, a minus x that's the wave function trial wave function we should take the complex conjugate but there's no i in here so we don't have to worry about that we have the Hamiltonian minus uh, h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x squared and then we have the wave function back again x times a minus x this is integrated over x all right so let's uh, just multiply these out Z 0 to a this would be a x minus x squared this would be our Hamiltonian minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x squared and we multiply this out this is again a x minus x squared dx okay well uh, let's uh, go ahead let's pull the h bar squared over 2m there minus h bar squared over 2m outside the integral sign and then we just have the integral of a x minus x squared all right let's take the second derivative of here take the first derivative that's a minus 2x take the second derivative that a is a constant goes away so the second derivative is just minus 2 now that's convenient dx and uh, let's go to the next page here and rewrite that so we have minus h bar squared over 2m and we have the integral now uh, we'll multiply through by that minus 2 so that will be minus 2ax plus 2x squared integrate over dx and we're integrating from 0 to a all right we can do this integral minus h bar squared over 2m and uh, we integrate that that is minus 2ax squared over 2 plus 2x cubed over 3 evaluated between 0 and a the lower limit when you put in x equals 0 that goes away so we just have the upper limit we replace x by a so this is minus uh, h bar squared over 2m uh, let's see that 2 goes away so this would just be a cubed plus 2a cubed and there should be a minus sign there plus 2a cubed over 3 and we could do this uh, minus h bar squared over 2m let's see so that's 3 thirds minus so this is minus a cubed over 3 so that first term in our energy expression is just a cubed h bar squared over 2m uh, sorry that's uh, not 2m so we have 3 times 2 uh, that's 6m okay so that's what that first term is all right so we evaluated that term now let's evaluate this term here that's just the square of the wave function that's our normalization factor so the uh, this term here the square of the wave function that will be equal to the integral from 0 to a of uh, what do you say x times a minus x and again x times a minus x we don't have to worry about complex conjugate dx and that's the integral from 0 to a of a x minus x squared times a x minus x squared again dx we multiply that out that's the integral from 0 to a of a squared x squared minus 2 a x cubed plus x to the fourth again integrated over dx we can do this integral so uh, let's see this would be a squared x cubed over 3 minus 2 a x to the fourth over 4 plus x to the fifth over 5 note that can simple simplify uh, we evaluate this from 0 to a huh 234 
two, three, five. Hmm. Interesting. All right. And uh, so let's uh, again, if we put the lower limit here, that'll all go away. So it's just the upper limit. We replace x by a. This is a to the fifth over three minus um, a to the fifth over two plus a to the fifth over five. And let's see, it looks like the common denominator here is uh, 30. So this would be 10 a to the fifth over 30 minus 15 a to the fifth over 30 plus 6 a to the fifth over 30. And this comes out to be just a to the fifth over 30. Okay. So now we have our uh, trial energy. Remember, that was uh, this integral up here divided by this integral. And that integral was the top integral. The numerator was, I forgot what it was, a cubed h bar squared over 6m, h bar squared over 6m. and our denominator we just saw was a to the fifth over 30. And we could simplify this. Uh, looks like, um, let's see, let me actually rewrite this as a 10 h bar squared over 2ma squared. All right, our true wave function or our true energy for the ground state of the high. Uh, particle in the box was remember pi squared h bar squared over 2 m a squared so we contrast with that trial wave function what we get with uh, what we would expect here in uh, this wave function all right well the only difference here is this is a 10 and that's a pi squared uh, the other things h bar squared to m a squared are the same so really it's the comparison of 10 and pi squared if you take pi squared, uh, what you get is uh, 9.87. So instead of 10 for the trial, the true should be 9.87. As we expect from the variation theorem, any trial wave function will give us an energy larger than the true wave function. Indeed, this is 10. This is 9.87, slightly larger, but it wasn't too bad. All right. Well, that's a lot of, you know, pencil pushing and so on. Uh, there's numerical ways to do this and I um, Excel can do just about anything, <laughs> make a cup of coffee or whatever. So uh, I don't know what this means. So let's uh, go ahead and use Excel um, to uh, do the calculate, do numerically what we just did by algebraic methods. Okay, so what I've done here in Excel is to program in this function psi of x and that is this red curve here and then uh, I have the exact solution to the particle in a box that we did earlier in the course. And what I want to tell Excel to do is to make this uh, approximate solution be as close as possible to the exact solution. And what I'm plotting here is actually not the wave function, but the wave function squared. I should fix that. I'll try to fix that before I post this on uh, Blackboard. All right, so this is the wave function squared. And what I want to do is to adjust this uh, approximate till it uh, most uh, as close as possible follow the exact solution for the probability density, the wave function squared. The way I've done that is to add this term c. And maybe you recognize c here is just a normalization constant. So what I'm going to do is to adjust my the value of a normalization constant to make the approximate be equal to the exact. So let's just do that. I'm going to lower it from 0.02 to say 0.01 and see here the uh, approximate value, wave function went down. I'm going to make it up a little, I'm going to raise it a little bit, 0.015, make it a little bit bigger. All right, so it went up a little bit and so on. So what I want tell Excel to do is to vary that normalization constant c so that the approximate wave function or the square of the wave function is as close as possible to the exact wave function. So maybe you know this uh, from Chem 422 or maybe you will when you take Chem 422 or Chem 455. Uh, what you do is you set up a term called chi-square, which is the square of the deviation between the two functions you want to equalize. Uh, 
and the idea is to minimize that square of the deviation. So here I have an Excel function and what I'm going to do is use what's called the, um, here's the solver function. So I'm going to tell Excel to set target cell. There's my target cell. That's chi-square, which is the deviation between my uh, two functions. I want to minimize that by changing the value of my parameter C. So Excel will uh, vary this parameter till this is minimized. And there it is. Okay, so there's the best value of my parameter. And here it is. So maybe you can see the red line is a pretty close fit to the exact line. So this function with the appropriate normalization is not too shabby, not too bad a fit for that. All right, and uh, let's look at the normalization. So if we go back here, uh, we found the uh, normalization constant, or actually this is one over the normalization constant squared. This is equal to one over C squared is A to the fifth over 30. So C uh, should be equal to 30 over A to the fifth. And what do we have here? Here the box, the A, the length of the box is 10. So our normalization constant, if we go by um, the, uh, let's actually do it here. So for, uh, for A is equal to 10, the normalization constant is the square root of 30 over 10 to uh, raised to the fifth, okay? So what we're doing is C is the square root of 30 over 10, A, A to the fifth, and you put in those numbers, you get 0 0.01732. So that's the normalization constant we got by doing all these integrals here. What's the normalization constant we got by using Excel? Oh look, 0 0.01752, uh, well not too bad. 3252 two. and in fact we can adjust the solver so that we get even a better fit. So there we go. So <laughs> you could do it either algebraically and uh, evaluate these integrals and then put in some numbers or you can just tell Excel to hey get the normalization constant by looking at a comparison between this approximate and exact. Now this becomes useful, more useful, this numerical way of approaching things becomes more useful when we use that modified. So now we're going to use the what we suggested. Remember what we suggested for a modified modified trial wave function. We said alright let's take x times a minus x and raise this to some power b and then you vary b to get this. Alright well uh, that's going to be a challenge because you're going to take derivatives and you get exponents and it's really a challenge and I started doing that and it was just uh, I don't want to do this I want to do it numerically. So what I did was here is the um, uh, yes here is the uh, function now it's just like this one except that we're raising x times a to the mi a minus x to the b power. Okay so uh, what does that look like? Now let's bring this to the front. Alright so uh, here's the exact and here I plotted this new uh, improved wave function, new improved wave function with this adjustable parameter b and also I have the normalization constant still c. I'm going to tell Excel uh, I want you to minimize this by adjusting the normalization factor and this factor b. Alright Excel do that and okay we'll just use the solver function. We want uh, Excel to minimize the deviation between these two curves, so that minimized by changing these two parameters, these two parameters. So we're going to change C and B, those two parameters, and say okay solve. There it is. Okay, ooh that's a pretty good fit. So here we have uh, C that exponent, or sorry B that exponent is 1.184. So if you take this 1.184 instead of raising it to the 1 power, then you get, oh, ah, well, that's a pretty good fit and uh, better than this fit here. So we've improved the fit by adding that adjustable parameter B. We got a value for that and there it is. Okay, so that's uh, use for Excel um, uh, where you don't feel like you, these 
doing these calculations numerically when you don't feel like doing them uh, algebraically. All right, so that's it for this uh, video lecture.